One of the mentioned problems can be regarded and solved separated from the others. A method which sees every single problem separated from each other in time and able to be solved sequently is going to fail. Even worse, a very detailed performance of highly qualified and motivated persons will always lead to a transmission of unpredictable side effects onto other connected problems if it concerns a problem that is only assumed to be separable. This will bring extensively experience only as a result of negative effects. Therefore, firstly, a general solution plan on the highest steps of decision is needed, as the indispensably prerequisite for the initial contact with the problem network. Secondly, a strategy which endeavors to solve all the problems parallel in time is needed. Meanwhile, it has to be proved and examined if there are direct interferences and with which effects they distribute in the problem network. If the interferences are found to be negligible after careful examination, the presented strategy may be called successful. But if the examined consequences are of such a condition which does not count as a neglectable collateral damage or which produces following problems that are even worse than the original problem, in this case, we may not talk about a solution for the original problem any longer. But every politically desirable presentation of success, one of the extensive efforts and financial investment, would be self-cheating and would make the further treatment of the original problem even more difficult if the mentioned case happened. It is a pity, even in economic and science, this fact concerning problem solving is neglected or is concealing due to advantage reason. Reason for this always is missing data or missing knowledge. However, Consequence of this behavior is that following generations have to fight growing problems, but at the same time, the instruments for the solving of problems have been almost used up in an unreasonable manner by the former generation. As an example, this is like the senseless searching for the wooden bucket to extinguish a fire in the house just because one believes in finding the wooden bucket because the parents have always talked about it earlier, but actually, this wooden bucket has already been secretly smashed by the parent to light the fire, which now put the house accidentally on fire. What would you say if you had such parents? Even single positive developments, for example in computer science or in communication techniques, may not cover up that we were not able to implement a successful general solution strategy, which is able to extinguish the burning house. To say with our example, what is the use of finding the handle of the bucket, but not the bucket itself, while the house is still burning? It is the same with the global problems nowadays. Every small progress is set up in the media as if it was a great success, but meanwhile we do not see that global problems are still growing, thus the house is still burning. So it's not amazing that a few voices of reminding and teaching are displaced into the background and finally grow silent. But since you, Mr. President, are in your office, the first time in history there is hope due to your understanding and your visionary few. The first time in history there is hope that a general solving strategy is seen to be necessary and so finally will be implemented. Of course, implementation of such a strategy is useful for the United States at first. But in the end, the, the presented strategy will be useful for all nations of the world. Last but not least, the United States of America will serve as a model for other nations because your nation was able to solve concerning problems effectively and permanently. Other nations will then follow this amazing example. but credit has stopped flowing the way it should. Too many bad loans from the housing crisis have made their way onto the books of too many banks. And with so much debt and so little confidence, these banks are now fearful of lending out any more money to households, to businesses, or even to each other. So where's the anthropocentric origin? the apparently inapparent beginning of the social wishes circle, which drives us from one existential crisis to another, which now endangers the survival of us all and the planet.
the right to define currency and produce money is incumbent to the state. Every money has its origin in the power of state, thus a government which assigned a privileged institution of the production of money. Since the power of the state has its origin in the people of the nation, to produce money is the property of the people of the nation, and so the converted right to define currency and produce money has to be used to serve the people of the nation. If the state gives to the privilege of managing the property of the people and to increase their prosperity to non-public institutions, for example banks, then the state is also able to take this privilege back from these institutions if this purpose is not served or if there is a misuse to the disadvantage of the people. To speak clearly, if the privilege of defining currency and producing money is only abused to privatize earnings and to socialize losses. On the one side, there is accumulating immeasurable wealth due to law granted privilege of my minority. On the other side, there are accumulating immeasurable amounts of debt for the great majority of the people of the nation. Since the power lays with the people and not with an aristocracy-like privileged minority, it is the right of the people to go to the elected government and to complain about the strong power relations. It is the right of the people to insist on the power and the privilege of managing money, returning back to the elected government. To act powerful and to convert privileges concerning money and the circulation of money is a right to the elected representatives of the people and to the elected government, it is not the inheritance of a caste of bankers. If the bankers fail in their duty, or if they misuse their duty to accumulate wealth and privileges and at the same time act to the disadvantage of the people, then it is necessary that the government takes away justice, wealth and privileges and converts it to another institution. So the money privilege can again be used to spread the prosperity of the nation. But how was it possible that the case of bankers again and again expanded their powers that far? The real money whose production was arranged by the state does only have entrance to the real economy if it is paid off anywhere. Nowadays, the payoff of the real money is the task of the clearing banks which provide money debts and cash points. But clearing banks are business enterprises themselves. As business enterprise, there is the necessity to earn money, but as they do not produce goods or commodity as it is useful and usually in real economy, banks generate their income through various financial products, which are finally based on the granting of credits and so again are based on incomes through interests. But before the clearing banks are able to pay off the real money or virtually pass it on a transfer, they also have to take up an equivalent credit at the central banks. This credit is partially paid off in real money. Central banks only grant credits if the clearing banks pay interests on this credit. According to the economic situation, the height of these interests, the so-called prime rate, differs. The prime rate is determined by the central bank. If it has been paid off by the clearing bank, every real money which is circulating has been paid off from a credit of interest sometime before. The exception from this rule is only a matter of the state and needs an according demand. The debtor has to produce goods and service to grant a repayment of interest. The distribution of those goods and services is necessarily connected to the payment of real money or to the equivalent euro transfer. The earned and booked money itself has been paid off against interest sometimes before. Credit economy, which depends on interest, contains a logical impossibility, a perpetual motion within itself. Interest-afflicted money can only be earned by using interest-afflicted money. This phase fact forces real economy to use borrowed money to earn new money, which has also been paid off from a credit and which is interest afflicted. The consequence from this is the rising pressure on involved persons and institutions to permanently grant the payback for the perpetual motion of the credit carousel. This pressure is passed over from the lending banks to the debtor, thus it is passed over to the economy but also to other banks and legal corporations. Economy passes the pressure over to suppliers, employees and finally to natural resources. Which extensive consequence do derive from this? A 
false consequence is to fasten at the same time also social Darwinistic selection of human resources in the interested orientated process of value creation. Hereby, human resources are categorized into valuable, less valuable, worthless. A second consequence of this is the pressure to exploit natural resources fast and inconsiderate. This leads to a neglect of millions of people because the maximization of profits in the interest of liquid credit economy only works on the base of minimizing wages. The necessity of minimizing wages always looks for the cheapest production location in a global competition. The cheapest production location is mostly to be found there where standards for social backup and environment protection is the least. Therefore, the accompanying down-leading social selection process and those the affected economy soon only to blossom shortly. If the boom years are over because a cheaper production location has been found somewhere else, the situation changes rapidly. While a privileged minority, the functionaries of the interest of liquid credit economy and their vessels privatize the so far in much profits, the former employed majority keeps an economy desert in which unemployment, poverty, social calamity and crime spread quickly. Burned ground for the majority, big profit for the minority. This is then called economic growth and one talks about economic rationality. The meanwhile involving social and planetic collateral damage will be either suppressed or declared to be indispensable or controllable. The indispensability and controllability will again and again be stated at employed subjects through the privileged money case according to a historical established paradigm. Initially, there is a quiet and gradual constriction of people's right on liberty. It is justified false-faced with the ensuring of the common welfare, the public order or the security of state. A bit of disturbance and an acceptable exception. Further, there is the assembly and disassembly of national as well as international democracy pretending state powers. Hereby, the representatives of the executive, which are legitimated on time, permanently assign themselves new extra authorizations which are not longer controlled by any parliamentary force in order to have more power over legislation. While this, the will of the people is being cut in significance with the help of electoral accumulating and cross-voting. Then, the silent takeover of power of the political upper class from the party system, which has already become meaningless. Parallel to this, the establishment of diligent bureaucracies, which help themselves with secret state capital, will take place. Soon, there will be an atmosphere of persecution of different thinking humans and intimidating people. This all will be accompanied by purchasable propaganda press. Further, with bustling obedience, the denunciation of white social circles if they do not allow the surveillance voluntarily. If the door is opened at once, the security delusion of the mobilizing bureaucracy cannot be stopped. Finally, police force in the inner and the outer of the state and military force will be executed. Police force will be applied against terrorists in the internet and the military force will be applied against terrorists abroad. Terrorists abroad sometimes are whole states which have to be proselytized or which have to be destroyed. All this will be permanently indoctrinated the democratic disempowered sovereign by the instrumentalized media to be political necessary and to be controllable. The gamesmanship of the functionaries of the interest afflicted credit economy for this development is always running after the same scheme and is identical in every period of civilization. First, the own incompetence will be made unrecognizable throughout legal confirmed collective irresponsibility. Then the medial stage search for a culprit which doesn't belong to own rows will be initialized. Hereby, the otherness of this person, due to reasons of belief, origin, race, sex or assumption, is very needful to provide a scapegoat that divides from one's own failure for the collective consciousness. Then one disposes oneself from this guilty scapegoat by using media prepared, unleashed violence. Finally, everything lies in ashes. Now the functionaries of the interest afflicted credit economy and their vessels, like lamps with their innocent faces, arrive and unconsciously mix their money, poisoned under to political realignment, so the game can start again. From epoch to epoch, from downfall to downfall, 
from realignment to realignment. From the animalistic point of view, there wouldn't even be a plea to the civilizing Darwinism by dint of selection and self-destruction and mutation for rebirth from their own ruins. The nature of the unconscious, thus the nature of low life, performs the circles of becoming and vanishing according to the same scheme. And actually, the history of humanity also performs according to this low law since for thousands of years. Do we actually work as intelligent collective according to this simple social Darwinistic evolution scheme? Do we all have reason to be grateful towards the functionaries of the interest afflicted credit economy for implying the social evolution? No, there is no reason for this. From epoch to epoch, functionaries of interest afflicted credit economy and their preferable allegiance did just not care how much harm, calamity and destruction has come over the people. The main thing was just to save and transfer the own structures of self-beneficiary of power and asset. Actually, it happened that only a preferable heavy destruction during an epoch provided the ideal point of departure for the interest afflicted credit economy to give new drive to the permanently crunching carousel of their money dogma. The system of logical impossibility saves itself in this manner again and again, from downfall to downfall, from epoch to epoch. But today, the situation is different from former times. This time, the industrial mechanization in the tow line of interest-afflicted credit economy had started cataclysmic cascades distributed over the whole planet. This cataclysmic cascades could sensitively disturb the old scheme of civilizing Darwinism of downfall and realignment. This time, it is not secure anymore that a moneyed minority of functionaries again would successfully press the reset button. This time, it looks like the whole civilization will be pulled down into the abyss together with its reset button. Later, we talk more about regarding those developments. Isn't it amazing how the interested afflicted credit economy successfully made it to collectively upnulitated common sense and so hinders the development of alternatives? Have we all become res irresponsible in a responsible manner? Since its invention in former times of history, the system of interest-afflicted credit economy has connected itself immediately and irreparable to the essential human attribute and the necessity to use money as intermediate agent for goods and services. Thus, as the result of our civilization history, today we find a creditor in the shape of the banker. Here, firstly, a mentality strikes into our eyes, which brings the contemplator the mentality of a carnivore, to his mind with an unrestrained greed for personal prosperity and social acceptance. His privileged claim to power is only legitimated by an accommodate interpretation of the right of ownership. This he continuously hides under the code of the economical necessity, so nobody raises a plea against his greed for power and earnings. For him it's economically more responsible to cut down the tree, to carry the wood to the market, whereupon he does not smudge his own hands as to take care of the tree over years until the tree carries fruits and then to sell the fruits on the market and this even for less money than the wood. As soon as there are no more trees to be cut down, the land and carnivore and the shape of the banker will learn fast. The new magic word is lifelong death for them. Vastly, with the help of willing lawyers secured with the right of ownership, not only private persons and the companies, but whole states and their peoples will be kept in the thrall of death from generation to generation. So, the functionaries of the interest-afflicted credit economy and their reliant vessels created instruments that are demanded by law, which make it surely impossible, even for the most humble credit slave, to escape from the credit trap. It is impossible, especially when the unpredictability of a moving world proves the predicted numeracy, which was the basis of giving the credit to be illusionary. Then the financial ruin, social decay and exclusion come over to credit menial. Then they will extensively seize and execute, even if there is nothing more to attach. Main thing is the borrower's note lying in the treasure chest of the banker as a deductible tax balance sheet item. 
as if right of ownership. What happens to the house of a debtor who has almost paid off his house and only through a chain reaction of unfortunate circumstances he is not liquid any longer? Too often it happens that this poor credit menial not only loses his house and home, but due to the touristic cost production machinery, in the end has to pay back even more debts than the original amount. So the property of the debt slave is going to be absorbed by the same banker carnivore who has to take the responsibility for circumstances that lead to the financial decay of the debtor who can't pay his debts off anymore. What has this to do with the right of ownership? And who wants to endure this literal madness voluntary? Thus everybody prefers to bow a struck before the self-appointed kings of capital without control and put oneself aside us and tumble under their protection just to be thinking about not to be rankled by them and without contemplating of alternatives. Hence there is no opportunity to finally bring the fluting going-ons of the credit-giving costs of carnivores to an end. Not completely. Initially, let's have a look at a normal citizen who is brought to a modest prosperity through work, assiduals and cannoners. Indeed, he is not a typical prey animal of the banker. This is the debtor himself, but also Joe Public will become first indirect, later direct, the victim of the credit-giving carnival pack in their fine suits. The prey will start in the same manner every epoch. Because every human wants to have a piece of their own cake, the banker pretends the wanting that he can satisfy his greed easier when he gives his hard-earned savings to the interest-afflicted credit economy. Since the middle-class prey animal is carefully, the banker wields his common sense with the poison of interest-afflicted profit margins for which he has colorful pieces of paper, shares, certificates, options and future warrants. This promises the happy, veiled prey animal an extra topping on its piece of the cake if it behaves only nice and again and again gives it best, namely its money, to the cage of the carnivore named Bank. Amazed by this plenty of philanthropy and exuberant distribution of profit, the wheeled collective of Joe Publics offer their earnings and their rental incomes to the pack of carnivores for cultivation. So, the trap closes with a snap. Here we can see how positive human attributes, as it is belief, hope and trust, are woven into the interest-afflicted credit economy. Those positive human attributes are abused as grease for the otherwise stuttering engine of the system of logical impossibility. Joe Publics, who live in a real economy, are not seldom used to earn money with hard work. Money is income that is legally taxed and so political, volitionally, mostly only scratches along for the daily needs. The working prey animal cannot even think about savings or profits, even not with more hard work. And so the pack of the busy prey animals watches astonished and dust at the same time onto the grand, sparkling skyscrapers of the aristocratic banker world, where all people seem to be extraordinarily happy and able to create arbitrarily high earnings, from which the normal prey animal would like to have something too. But politicians and bankers let the normal prey animal only bring their nice and clean old money there. Dazzled by the shining of big facades, seduced by the amount of huge numeracies in extending tables, veiled by colorful pieces of paper, drunken by altitude of flight driven market values, the normal prey animal is willing to get rid of the common sense and to step voluntarily into the trap of the carnivore pack. But which achievements and which securities do we get from the banker if we, the Joe Publics, hand them over our hard-earned money. The case of bankers has an established and elaborated system of apparent availability and irresponsible security, namely the certified values, thus shares, certificates, bonus shares and so on, which we want to preferably call, regarding their origin and their fluctuating value, colorful pieces of paper. These colorful pieces of paper promise the normal prey animals, in the exchange for their real money, to the bank-owning carnivores, not only arbitrary availability, but also additional profits, 
if the real money will be paid off again any time in the future. To prove the working of the system of logical impossibility, the payoff and the interest promise will always be fulfilled on request, which can be controlled by everybody, by cashman payment of the savings at the cash desk or by selling the colorful pieces of paper. Or not? And I intend to hold these banks fully accountable for the assistance they receive, and this time they will have to clearly demonstrate how taxpayer dollars result in more lending for the American taxpayer. So what? To neglect from this point of view the progressing currency depreciating, the floating state debt, the permanent tax risings, the real sinking pensions, the suffering real economy, mass poverty, destruction of the environment, climate change, hunger catastrophes, social and existential civilization crisis, from this developing wars and the downfall of the particular epoch, you could actually gain the impression that the interest afflicted credit economy is a working pyramid scheme in which everybody gets additionally to the amount that was paid in, something more paid out. Annoyingly, that sometimes a little financial crisis clouds a beautiful illusoriness on the self-replicating amount of money. Annoyingly, that the deafening noise of the stock market, thus the place of the amazing replication of the colorful piece of paper, awakes sleeping politicians who are the animal tamer of carnivores, who then amaze drop their eyes when they see the shrinking stock market. From what suddenly derived those little ailments, namely financial crisis, which lets all cringe. As the real economy has only grown half as the amount of money since the Second World War, the profit promise of the functionaries of the interest afflicted credit economy towards the middle class prey animals cannot be pictured onto the productivity of the real economy for a long time. Instead, the case of bankers makes the collected money rotate like a windmill in the unextrictable undergrowth of global credit bonds and then makes it disappear in apparently safe ports. And while the money is rotating that nicely, chocolates of the big money branch off their incentives, profit sharing and incomes. Moreover, in the same manner, an accumulated profit will be created, as a magician conjures a rabbit from a cylinder. The plenty of dependences and materialities which are done or owed in politics and economy are taken care for that. By using plenty of colorful pieces of paper, which are distributed anywhere at the same time, which are also rotating circles, this looks quite successful if you watch it through a rose-colored magnifier. But at one point, even the real prey animals notice that the profit promises are pure vent holes and that the promises cannot be kept by anyone. The system of mutual dependency suddenly suffers from cracks and collapses abruptly. Then, the carnivores devour each other. Lots of the colorful pieces of paper are now toxic. Who has too much of that in his cage will perish and will be devoured by the other carnivores. Suddenly, there is crying and teeth grinning. Has the yelling of the pack of carnivores become too loud in their cages, the political animal tamers are called to appear to subdue the situation with the help of carrot and stick. How does this happen? Hastily, the State Commission produced huge amounts of real money that seemed to appear from nowhere to feed the greedy chops of the carnivores. Day and night the printing machines are now running to produce new colorful pieces of paper, which have regulated by law stable value and so are called hard money. As the other colorful piece of paper, which were invented by the carnivores for being on the prowl, do not have any value and so are now toxic, the pyramid shame cannot be kept alive any longer. Thus the political animal tamers and their credit-giving carnivores are going to agree fast that a new feeding with hard money is necessary again. If the carnivores are saturated by hard money, even the toxic pieces of paper become surprisingly valuable again. At least for a short period of time, until the next feeding becomes due again. It was not like this, everything we believe in, everything that is nice and important to us, will end up in chaos, or not? The government that doesn't want to participate in the feeding of the carnivores any longer 
due to excessive demands with the debts, will just be blackmailed by the carnivores. Then, they will not pay out real money at the cash decks when the crowd of millions of betrayed prey animals, which all want to have the money back, arrives. This would have then turmoil and unpleasant pictures on the TV as a consequence. Then, regrettably, there could no credits be given to the real economy anymore. Then, they will production factories stand still, because they cannot buy goods anymore. Then, millions of workers will be disbanded. Then, also the colorful pieces of paper are worthless, which have been untroubled so far. The election people will not like all this. Certainly, the next election is coming. So, the political animal tamer cringed before the hissing of the carnivores and provide them with whatever they want. There are no alternatives, are there? Indeed there are. Initially, let's have a look to the direct consequences which derive from missing alternatives, as we promised it earlier. To be mentioned firstly, the governments today also get preferable blackmailed, as it has been the case in the medieval times, instead of developing alternatives. It is more comfortable to project future tax income in the present to convert them into hard real money, which is finally going to disappear in the throats of the hungry carnivores as a snack. At least with this the world could get along somehow, but unfortunately there will always be complex interaction in between the interest afflicted credit economy and the rest of the world and so it will not work. Actually we are watching a permanently rising encumbrance of private households and a state over all responsible measures. Fluctuation of debts, which has been staged by the media to be an economic recovery, which has been arranged and caused by bankers to distribute the illusion of success, will only beguile the political animal tamers if they want to be beguiled. And this happens way too often, especially before elections. Actually, the only reallocate virtual reality that has not been existing before, and according to the situation, probably will not exist in the future. Actually, there is no profit loop that is independent from the real economy, but that is only an issue illusion holding without legal responsibilities, which are held up artificially by law for a certain time. This is proved by the latest collapse of the financial branch. The apparently lawfully cemented necessity to hand out credits only for interests and securities only rewards the carnival-like mentality of the creditors and forces the debtors to behave the same way against all social reasons and scientific awareness regarding the global consequences of this behavior. The functionaries of the interest-afflicted credit economy and their euphemistic fellowships always provide the economic necessity and the inviolable right of ownership as arguments to nip every discussion about that in the euphemistic part. Isn't their own economic existence or even the existence of the whole nation economic at risk if the interest-afflicted credit economy isn't rendered homage? But doesn't it work the other way around? We will show here that especially the interest-afflicted credit economy starts this machinery which will endure the downfall of the civilization with its global expanding if there won't be insight and decidedness developed fast or the highest political level of decision. Problem-oriented innovations which often are only provided bravely by lateral thinkers. This may not be nipped in the bud anymore, just because it is pleasant to the self-promotion of the cost of carnivores. Also George Washington was a lateral thinker when preferred the president's charge to the royal crown. Absolutely untypical for this time in history. But if he had not made this untypical decision, the United States still should be a British colony or would have been pulverized in between the ruling nations of the last centuries. We may not give the actual power of politics and economy to the functionaries of the interest-afflicted credit economy. This would again be a self-made death sentence for ourselves. George Washington did not only understand the system of check and balance, he took it over and lived according to its rules. It is time that this system of democratic reason is also applied onto the credit economy. The system of the interest-afflicted credit economy forces the real economy permanently upon a growth dogma and the real economy reacts with mass production of low-value consumed goods with infinite production sequences of overpowered design studies with industrial produced foods and with planetary collateral damage 
and an existence menacing degree. No crisis in the human's history since the invention of the interest-afflicted credit economy, no catastrophe was ter terrible enough to substitute this system of logical impossibility with a more reasonable capital economy. What has become the ultimate ratio in the art of governing since George Washington, namely to establish check and balance for a government that has been failed by establishing check and balance in the capital economy? It is time for a change. Even without extraordinary effort in the parliament and in the government, Pandora's box that has been opened with the invention of interest afflicted credit economy in historic times can be closed again. During the course of our presentation, a general solution strategy will be drafted. With this strategy, the American nation can be immunized largely against the toxic consequences of future financial crises. And those will certainly come as soon as the latest fresh money, which is distributed all over the world by the ruling animal tamers in their well-known cages, has come to an end again. This fresh money will be relocated so long by the jugglers of the interest-afflicted credit economy until there is nothing left in the real economy. After this, the hissing of the carnivores will start again. But today we can't not be certain that the civilization we know we still exist when the carnivores want to be fed again. Therefore, it is a question of survival to fight the evil from the roots. But there will always be the question why this hasn't been recognized earlier and why such a master plan hasn't been developed and realized earlier. This is easy to understand. The system of the interested afflicted credit economy does always change its appearance just in time to unrecognizable spread the monetary reticence of the logical impossibilities over the population again and again. For civilizing short periods of time, the poison of the interest-afflicted credit economy will deafen the common sense again, until the perishable bot will elevate again from the ashes of the next predictable clash of irresponsible sanctimony and bottomless ignorance. As always, there have been clear signs of warnings which have been ignored collectively. Why? are the signs of warning ignored collectively always. We all have been nurtured since we could barely walk to define our value in a society over the amount of money which we receive for our efforts from the society. But this originally positive attribute of picturing effort to money value is abused by the functionaries of the interest-afflicted credit economy to their own purpose to convert the will to bring effort into complicity -ship. starting at the point when profit promises deafen our cognition. Like the lemmings, we obediently follow the prescribed behaviors patterns, which has been converted by the functionaries of the interest-afflicted credit economy through adjusted legal system. We do not even think about the consequences for our civilization deriving from that. But why didn't we cease to exist from the extensive consequences of the interest-afflicted credit economy earlier. Initially, we actually did. In fact, quasi-periodically recurring over historically long periods of time. In former times, the consequences of the interest-afflicted credit economy distributed on long historical terms of time, which were always long enough to delete them from our collective memory. Additionally, History shows that the consequences and their effectiveness only were limited to the particular epoch, which in the worst case ended with the physical death of some millions of people and a state order. Thus, the survival of the whole species or the plant was never at risk. After a limited inferno, the collective replacing immediately started connected to an economical restart from the ruins of the perished epoch. This all is assisted and paid for by the vessels of the interest-afflicted credit economy who again mix their compounded interest poison into the rebuilding. But no epoch in the history of human was yet able to have a look into the deepest downs of themselves to find the causes for their inner and outer downfall. The ones who would have been able to do so weren't anymore and soon were forgotten. Their works followed a state inco incomprehensible for the surviving because they were worrying about other things. Hence, no clear warning or instruction could be kept in the collective memory to prevent the same destiny for a future epoch. But what is the difference between few former times and today?
As a difference to former times, today we have a global economy which spans around the whole world. This global economy can use technical support, which did not exist in former times, to optimize the permanent process of successfully exploit human and natural resources. The fast pace and the global dimension of value performance for the interest afflicted credit economy today is unique to the history of mankind. This time it doesn't only bother a few millions of people and their state order, as in earlier epochs. This time it will bother the whole planet and everything living on it. Even those who have enough money to create subsurface bunkers with exuberant pantries are uncertain that they will survive when the incipient calamity knocks on their door. Will the time that is remaining be enough to transform our civilization so that the already happened damage can be repaired in the secure port of science and technique just in time before we drink in the flutes, flutes of unsolved problems? In the first instance, it has to be mentioned that the people menacing civilizing downfall is not emerging in form of separate and time sequence problems, how it may appear comfortable to be simple thinking of some lobbyist functionaries. Although the signs are present already, some political decision makers still like it to enableize the situation for the media by using sugar coated statistics and tables. This happens to arbitrarily delay an honest discussion of necessary corrections. In the worst case, this will benumb the social forces of those who still were able to provide corrections in time. Their careful voices of warning and instruction disappear in the daily medial people sprinkling. This will finally make the imminent catastrophe and its consequences even worse and despairing. Only your open and honest character, Mr. President, to directly name the problems gives us courage and hope at the same time that those who are blessed with a bright and incorruptible intellect have the possibility to name the problems as open and honest as you do. Maybe this is the initial starting point of a step-by-step -step healing from the place, which the interest of liquid credit economy carries with it and which haunts mankind again and again since thousands of years. Is there already any alternative to the interest of liquid credit economy? Actually, there is. The magic words which can close Pandora's box again is adaptive capital economy. But it won't happen that the adaptive capital economy competes against the interest afflicted credit economy, and there won't be a symbiosis of them. But the interest afflicted credit economy will be in a host parasite relationship towards the adaptive capital economy. Unfortunately, this cannot be avoided because the interest afflicted credit economy has settled in like a cerebral tumor whose cutting off would cause the death of a patient immediately. Therefore, the adaptive capital economy will be applied more like a medical method, which slowly but consistently will cut off the bloodstream of the cerebral tumor of the interest afflicted credit economy. People will, without any other pressure, out of themselves, preferably reinvest their money into the processes of the adaptive capital economy, instead of using it for feeding the cancer of the interest-afflicted credit economy. This will exactly happen from the first moment the adaptive capital economy can show its first successes. But the carnival was a cunning. In a subtle manner, they will try to prevent or destroy the successes of the adaptive capital economy. For this reason, the adaptive capital economy, including all of, all of us, has the chance to survive only if a secularized power, which has incorruptible been legitimated and which is of the highest authority, holds its securing hand over the adaptive capital economy. This is also the reason why we have to take care of your reputation and authority, Mr. President, with littlest eyes so that this would not be pulverized in the salaried mills of the media maybe in a campaign against any reform that you suggested. This would have fatal consequences for the future when other important problem solutions are the point of interest. If it is the interest of the interest afflicted credit economy to limit the democratic control of the effectiveness of the achieved privilege. If the case of carnivores cannot keep their aristocratic-like privilege through declared illusionary profits, through pseudo-generatic economic growth, subtle blackmailing or through paying compliant lawyers, then they try to keep their privilege through a strategy 
to limit the power of the population and its elected government. For this, the case of carnivores uses every instrument. Therefore, we will provide you only such suggestions and solutions which will enhance your authority and your reputation in front of the people, because only you, presentable successes as president, are the key for the change to civilization needs so urgent, even though the adaptive capital economy enhances the survival of our civilization, this doesn't mean that case of carnivores accredits this to their own advantage. Therefore, it lacks of comprehension and foresight, the inborn behavior of the carnivores is it to get prey fast and not to serve the common welfare. Only if the pressure of the political animal tamer with the wipe in the cage is big enough, thus they try to drill the carnivores, the carnivores will cringe for the snapping of the wipe for a short time. Unfortunately, the drill of social behavior is forgotten quickly as soon as the animal tamer leaves the cage. Even new whips, spoken differently, new laws, would not change anything because the carnivores will always find a way to avoid the snapping. Therefore, the plug of interest afflicted credit economy will come back to us again and again in long irregular cycles. Even the new laws will not change anything. The interest afflicted credit economy carries an unavoidable systematic failure within itself, which cannot be solved. Only the consequences of the mistake could be limited anyhow. The herefore necessary immunization is provided by the adaptive capital economy. Which attributes does the adaptive credit economy now have? One part of the adaptive capital economy is it to come back to a recapitalization of the economy without needing the interest afflicted credit economy. As a consequence of this, there will be innovative economic growth and full employment. As a parallel development, poverty, criminality and the number of illness in the population will reduce. The adaptive capital economy will re-establish equal opportunities for everybody in the society again, what has always been a part of the basis of the American constitution. The adaptive capital economy does not know royal-like extra privileges and doesn't produce dubious networks of financial mafia-like dependencies but acts for clearly predefined rules and processes, which out of themselves do not need advocacy because they are immediately clear to everybody who is not deafened by the poison of the interest-afflicted credit economy. Humans who have been scaled by the banks to the dead human capital until now will again become valuable and appreciated members of your nation's real economy. Unemployment turns into full employment. Illness turns into vitality. Decay into reconstruction. National debt into national wealth. This gets at working what the interest-afflicted credit economy puts upside down. What is the use if the head is made out of gold, if the feet are made out of clay and cannot carry the body any longer? The effort for this can be performed. If we don't perform it, there will be nobody after us that could do so. The cost price for this is manageable and in relation small because all preconditions are already available and only an initial financing for the circuits of the adaptive capital economy is needed. Encouraged once, the circuits of the adaptive capital economy will achieve real and permanent gainings without producing more and more debts anywhere else, as we showed in our presentation. What was invented by humans can also be changed by humans. And if it not sh should not be able to change due to cumbrous judicature or irrational oppositions, it is not even necessary to remove the cerebral tumor by surgery, because without the introduction of the adaptive capital economy, it will come to its predetermined end even faster. Regrettably, this is an end that bothers our whole civilization too. Hence, it is a sign of insight and responsible acting not to fight against the interest-afflicted credit economy but to introduce the adaptive capital economy parallel in time. The adaptive capital economy does not longer suffer from the mistakes of the interest-afflicted credit economy, thus it doesn't have imminent logical impossibilities. So, we do not touch the system of the interest-afflicted credit economy. No, because we learn from history. 
the calamity does not derive from the capital, and also it does not derive from property or increase of capital. The calamity does derive from the interest-afflicted credit economy, which abuses the capital for its condemnable pyramid system. But this time we have, firstly and uniquely in history, the opportunity to reflect the cohesion critically and implicit at the same time. And so we can save our civilization from downfall just in time by using incorruptible elaborated solutions. This time we have the unique chance to immunize just in time before the deadly plug which the interest afflicted credit economy carries in her suitcase comes over us again. The introduction of the adaptive capital economy can only emanate from the United States of America. From there, where the constitution protects the braves and hard workings, but doesn't endure the royal-like privileges which means the existence of the state by the case of bankers. From there, where you, Mr. President, govern the country with insight and wisdom. From there, where the prosperity of the people is a higher good as the privileged self-enrichment of a vanishing small group of functionaries. Finally, the introduction of the adaptive capital economy is next to the try of regulating the interest-afflicted credit economy, a royal duty and is incumbent to your wise decision, Mr. President. With this presentation, we had the intention to show how this is possible easily. And we will be in if these insights have to be presented to other boards of decision. Nobody will have to lose or render some of his prosperity or already gain capital. Aside from the fact he renders it voluntarily and willingly for his home country to make the initial step for a new, great and healthy future possible. The introduction of the adaptive capital economy under the royal protection of your state power and beside the interest afflicted credit economy would then be the first step into the right direction namely to protect the American nation against the consequences of future financial crisis. This planet is the home of us all. This planet provides a rich treasure for us all. To protect and to treat this planet carefully is therefore a commandment of reason. This planet also is the only basis for a new level of human civilization. Only if we treat our planet with this insight, we will get the time we need to successfully make the steps out in an even bigger and richer universe, which still is waiting for us. We have to consider what comes next, because we can't afford to return to an economy based on inflated profits and maxed out credit cards.
On this point now, we want to answer the question how it is actually possible to solve all dimension problems not only parallel in time, but also in a time and cost saving manner. The answer is given by upscaling the iPhone wiki principle to a governing principle of economical reason. We are going to explain this principle now. But primarily, a few words regarding the present situation. The time we live in today, a time in which the iPhone wiki principle has not yet been developed in a governing principle of ecological reason. The partially private, partially by taxpayers financed educational system has been producing a legion of academics for decades. These academics often are classified and so supposedly overqualified and may bicker against each other for the decreasing amount of qualified jobs. Or the academics are parked on less qualified jobs for years and they become more and more bored there. Further. The interest afflicted the credit economy in the context of its incompetent self-aggrandizement only backs up the payment-dependent autonomy of young academics if they subordinate under the false face game of profit maximization and interest problem. Last but not least, dull public offices and overcomplicating lawyers make sure that every scientific creativity and technological innovation is nipped in the bud. Hence, finally, no development is ignited which could save our civilization from downfall just in time. Under these circumstances, what other possibility do the democratically responsible politicians have than to immediately stage and celebrate even the smallest change as if it was innovative quantum jump, even though it only has a virtual character? This all happens with a suppressed awareness that actually none of the existential problems of our civilization has been solved yet, if we consider it hard-headed. So far, today we are endued with the conceivable worst socio-political preconditions which could dominate an engineered civilization that tries to oppose something to the emerging catastrophe timely. Therefore, and only therefore, a civilizing catastrophe of global dimension is inevitable pre-assigned because we are not able to create alternatives for the hetero-existing ways of thinking and behaving. We like to see ourselves as creation's growing glory of evolution. Actually, we are stuck in the middle. And it's not obvious how this pride of creation wants to prevent that just this creation itself wants to shake us off.
An important step towards a new way of thinking for the solving of the well-known problems is the enhancement of the iPhone Wiki principle to a socio-economic governing principle. We shortly want to draft how this principle works and we immediately want to scale it into the benchmark that is necessary for solving the well-known problems. So, there are millions of qualified people distributed all over the world who want to get the problems solved they know from the media as they are informed as carrier of knowledge. But until today, in the whole world, there is no internet-supported, general, accessible and organized structure which makes this knowledge that is distributed to millions of different heads available for the result-oriented and qualified solving of the problems. Particularly, a responsible thinking and acting government which by dint of the provision of the necessary infrastructure adopt and utilize this knowledge in an intelligent manner. The nation whose government firstly remarks how the iPhone Wiki principle works as a socio-economic governing principle will be light years in advance in the shortest possible time towards other nations. In a healthy way, full employment, economic growth and the cutback of the budget deficit will emerge, but only under the assumption of the presented characteristics of a cross-link problem-solving strategy. In the first instance, we go back to the follow unused knowledge potential which is spread in millions and millions of different heads of educated people all over the whole world. For example, there are senior citizens who have taken their knowledge and their experience along into pension and who are more or less bored in their retirement. Their knowledge is of unimaginable value and their knowledge has been by no means in company transferred one to one to the following generation, like shows us experience every day anew. Furthermore, there are innumerable amounts of students as well as catechists and employed academics who already have completely finished at least partial problem solving stored in their drawer for years, if not decades. But they do not have the heart to appear before the public because they are either too timid or they have the fear that they are comprehended in a wrong way or at least that they are uncomprehended at all. Moreover, the carriers of the educational potential do know about the insuperable difficulties which enhance from the interest afflicted credit and finance economy. But as there is a lack of real alternatives, they always have to come back to this old and bad working system. Only due to this reason there is enough deterrent demonstration material for which reason they make their knowledge not available for the general wealth and prosperity of mankind. Furthermore, there are innumerable employees, but also only part-time or by time employed people who are qualified carriers of knowledge. But their knowledge degenerates because in their environment they cannot really use it or their knowledge becomes obsolete because they do not have the possibility of personal continuing education. How long can our civilization afford it to let this inestimable knowledge capital become obsolete? Thereby, in this unused knowledge capital, there lies one of the keys that are necessary for solving all of the mentioned problems, but only if it is applied and activated in the manner of the iPhone Wiki principle. The previous ways of the usual methods of trying to solve the well-known problems only do cause an infinitely growing avalanche of costs for the employed taxpayers. This permanently growing avalanche of costs will let the state choke on a huge amount of debt, this can't go on like before. Thus, it's time for the application of the iPhone Wiki principle. Of course, you have heard that the enterprise Apple with its iPhone has reached a huge market share in the branch of smartphones in only a little while, even though other enterprises have been represented dominantly on the market of mobile communication. But this isn't the actual effort that has to be mentioned here. Rather, the particular actually is the tempo, the stable quality and the every time availability with which the iPhone users can dispose of a wide broadness of application softwares which are provided for downloading in the internet. So, these apps are solutions in a minor key and they are a first hint how future solutions on a grand scale which civilization needs will be developed. On closer examination of the basis cohesion, we learn something important from the enterprise Apple. It is the alliance between Apple and the developers, which has made this important step 
namely the application of solutions and the minor key, possible through fairness and an equal chances between the developers themselves. Herefore, Apple has provided the necessary tools and the infrastructure, as well as the transparent basic conditions, on the basis of which the desirable and necessary developments have become possible and whose use enters to the benefit of all the users who want to take hold of those solutions in a minor key. So we scale this cohesion on the necessary dimension that is of unaffordable value for the United States and for the survival of our civilization. But primarily back to your explanation of the second part of the iPhone wiki principle, certainly, you have heard of the internet supported knowledge database with the name Wikipedia? Of course, this has to be understood as a rhetorical question as well as the question if you already and willingly take hold of the knowledge provided in Wikipedia. Wikipedia is an internet supported knowledge library which permanently progresses and which is filled up with life and content through the alliance of the carriers of knowledge from all over the world. Hereby, the alliance of knowledge carriers controls the quality of the entries and optimizes them permanently on their own. And this means another very important point. It is only logical to scale the functionality of Wikipedia into the dimension we need and which is necessary for the real and fast solving of the well-known problems. This shall not develop a pure knowledge database, but a project-orientated database, which structures the knowledge hierarchical, dynamic, object and result-orientated. So, what does the application of the iPhone wiki principle mean for the future of the United States and the survival of our civilization altogether? Let's put ourselves on an imagined platform and take a hypothetic view down on a world in which this principle has already been implemented by the government of the United States. The US government has already established a public office which directly subordinated to the president and which only is responsible to the president. In the following we call this office GOCPC, which means Governmental Office for Civil Project Coordination. It is the matter of an only small but very intelligent functionality unit. In cooperation with the president and his senior staff, GOCPC formulates the problems that have to be solved and installs an internet supported infrastructure for the worldwide flow of knowledge into this infrastructure. This happens with the goal to convert worldwide available, unspecific and peripheral knowledge that, after it has been structured and treated, contains the solutions for all problems into specifically usable, centralized knowledge. All over the world, people are called on to participate in solving the detailed described problems via the Internet. Of course, only those people will follow this call in the differential manner, which have sufficient knowledge next to time at their disposal. People who are highly motivated to find solutions and for who a personal direct use is secondary because they are already otherwise earned a living or they are already too tired. But this doesn't mean that they go away empty handed in the opposite. Regarding this, later more. In the context of the evolution and methods prescribed by the GOCPC, project groups develop. Naturally, the members of this group can communicate with each other via Internet by using the structured platform provided by GOCPC. Each project group chooses a taskmaster from its own rows, who goal-orientated structures modulates and elaborates the knowledge of the members for the next higher step of decision. Whenever a subtask has been finished successfully by the work of the project group, the results will be handed over and provided for the next higher project level. There, the sequence will recur according to the results of the subordinated project group. In this manner, there will be a solution provided for all of the mentioned problems parallel in time, which primarily, of course, will only exist in cyberspace, exactly in the database of the GOCPC. Depending on the access permissions, the project members have access to the different project levels. To avoid espionage and sabotage, GOCPC will cooperate with the appropriate US administrations in a balanced manner and integrate their proposals into the provided infrastructure. Everybody's qualified. Beginning with the small turner up to the biggest economy enterprises, 
everybody will participate in solving the problems in cyberspace. We will explain soon why the people will be hooked with participating in this project and where ready applicable results of highest quality will be developed within the shortest possible time. And that means finally to rescue our civilization just in time. It has to be mentioned now that there are almost no costs for the US government evolving from the application of the internet supported infrastructure by GOCPC. These low costs will later be balanced by additional earnings through that infrastructure. This will not happen in the manner of a big economy enterprise, because that is not what GOCPC is, but in form of reducing the public deficit, up upcoming full employment and additional tax income for the state through the selling of exactly those licenses, products, goods and services, which are sold worldwide by assigned distribution companies. Hence, products, machines, goods and services which were generated from the previously mentioned knowledge. Initially, invaluable knowledge from all over the world flows into the United States, but never out of the United States. It flows into GOCPC, where it is connected on different project levels until it is a complete solution. Hereby, the project manager isn't an employee of the US government, as well as the project participant aren't employees of the US. Instead, the project participants are distributed all over the world. Here it has to be mentioned that all the project participants assign their rights of their own knowledge to the United States, represented by the GOCPC. The participants do know that before and they willingly will do this, because later they will regularly receive payments from the distribution of the license, products, machines, goods and services they help to develop. Without an according declaration of the project members, they cannot participate in the GOCPC system. This is the only way to prevent long and expensive legal flights on the right of ownership of thoughts and ideas in between the participants and towards the GOCPC itself from the beginning. This also is only valid regarding the announced problems and their solutions. While knowledge, which is relevant for solving the problems, flows into the USA from all over the world, hereby only the initializing moment is noticeable regarding the costs. Later finished product, machines, goods and services flow out of the USA into a global export, but just faster, cheaper and more sustainable than ever before. When a project module has been finished in the virtual world and realization in the real world, actually to construction in the reality, has finally been approved by the last decision level of project management, GOCPC is starting to announce the realization of this project module. But this happens completely different to the way the US government has announced projects in turn or to the free economy until today. The reason for this lies within the necessary reduction of the costs for the US taxpayer and at the same time also to raise the quality of the results and to shorten the phases of development. These goals can only be achieved like this. All project participants in the cyberspace, as well as all of the applying realization partners for the afterward realization, from the small mechanical turner up to the biggest commercial enterprise, know from the beginning which percentage allotment from the profits of the distribution belongs to them as soon as the distribution companies took up the worldwide sale of those products and services that have been developed in cyberspace according to the iPhone wiki principle. The US government, represented by the GOCPC, formulates the necessary rules of the game and surveys the obedience by the rules for the applying realization partners. The US government doesn't pay wages or similar payments. This is not necessary, because the project participants are already earning their life otherwise and take part voluntarily and in the leisure time, or later full-time in the realization phase. Moreover, during our presentation we show how the realization partners have an alternative possibility of refinancing with the adaptive capital economy than it can be offered in the interest-afflicted credit economy. Of course, the US government has due to its obvious reasons for security-relevant major projects, which set up out of small units and which have to go through a test phase to provide useful areas or let them be provided by partners on which the realization partner, the representatives of the free economy, can install the necessary units or project modules. 
small subunits can be installed and implemented in other locations as it is already common today. On this, in the US selected locations, then the necessary functional checks, adjustments and quality assurance for the appropriate major project take place, as well as the granting of safety and availability. Back to the question, which kind of motivation the project participant on the one hand and the realization partners on the other hand will have, as there is obviously no payment by the US government until now, and this although the biggest and hardest problems in the history of mankind will be faced. Interestingly, hereby nobody will lose his job, but in the upper side, a work and employment appearance will emerge as it has never existed before. Hence, it is important part of the iPhone Wiki principle to explain how the project participants who have developed the solutions in cyberspace will receive payment and reward for their work. The same, of course, counts for the realization partners. Hence, all economic persons, companies and institutions which have been involved in the conversation of the solution from cyberspace into reality. Already anchored in the cyber concept of GeoCPC, the project developed into concrete products and services, which are able to solve the name problems permanently and parallel in time. These products and services are of such character that they are adapted for the inland retail as well as for the retail abroad. The profit from the retail of this product and services now flows in a balanced and predefined manner onto the custodial accounts of GeoCPC or selected ACE institutes, which are under the surveillance of the US government. Emanating from these custodial accounts, the realization partners and the project participants are finally paid in a predefined manner. The financial circuit finally closes for all of the involved people. GLCPC does not act like a commercial enterprise, but more like a secured and providing instance for an internet-supported infrastructure. Moreover, GLCPC is a controlling institution for the evidence by the rules of the game and custodian for the profit distribution from the selling returns. Here, it has to be mentioned clearly that the GLCPC does not solve the problems itself, but only provides the necessary infrastructure in whose space the alliance of the carriers of knowledge elaborate the solutions on their own and then bring it to the economy to make them usable for the good of all people. The US government now has the unique opportunity to be the first government worldwide, which implements this principle for its own advantage and further to take over a significant role of leadership. This is a special privilege and at the same time a special commitment. Out of own interests, the US government will give over the refinancing of the realization partners to more stable financing models, as it has been the case up to now. These stable financing models have already been mentioned during this presentation in the context of the advantages of the adaptive capital economy. In this way, the American nation gained security, stability and calculability in the young country, what was decreasing over the last years and what has to be encountered for directly by the interest-afflicted credit and finance system. Diligence, capability, equal opportunities, fairness and transparency in a described manner will again become respectable virtues in the financial circuit of the United States. The small self-standing foreman as realization partner for a defined afford has the same opportunity as a huge commercial enterprise which employs 20,000 people if the application as realization partner for the solution elaborated in cyberspace is concerned. Everybody realizes his contribution to the project in his own area and under his own responsibility. Starting with a small bolted assembly ending up with the realization of building a new armada of spaceships. Indeed, mankind stands at the abyss due to self-caused problems but mankind has for the first time in history the opportunity and the instruments to solve these self-caused problems within a short time and without causing another financial collapse of any national economy. This effort is an alien talk of all carriers of knowledge on this world. It is now up to the US government to decide whether this knowledge in the explained manner is grown and bringing wealth to the United States or if it is unique opportunity is just going to be put aside unused. 
With this decision, we will know if the United States are still able to lead the free world or if the inner decay has already gone so far that another nation will have to take over the role as leader in the high-tech future of mankind. We truly hope that the United States think back to their former strength and soon will prove its qualities as leader with right doings and not only with nice words. Last but not least, we want to point out that also on the way of realizing of problem solving, the US government surely has many appropriate instruments and measurable available or is able to make them available anyhow, whenever capability, efficiency or special efforts of project participants or realization partners have to be rewarded. The motivating moment of small rewards given predefined by incorrupt state hand cannot be estimated high enough and in this case state rewards should not be reserved for US citizens because the many carriers of knowledge from all over the world are giving their valuable contribution for the advantage of the United States. For example, we are thinking about certificates and medals from gold, silver and bronze, similar to those given away in the world of sports. But also people who have been bringing an effort regarding the solving of dimensioned problems on different stages of the project over a sufficient long period of time to the here presented institution GOCPC can be recompensed with rewards like, for example, a limited working permission in the USA, scholarships for children or similar benefits. Such rewards do not cost much for the USA. In the opposite, the motivating moment of the mentioned rewards bring back a multiple of their originally value to the United States. In the conclusion is following an extract of the public application of the iphone Ricky principle as the government's principle of economical sense. Finally, an overview is given by a build-up. 1. The worldwide alliance of the carriers of knowledge solves those problems permanent, sustainable, economic, as well as parallel in time and within a very short period of time which threatened the survival of the civilization on Earth. 2. Hereby, the American nation takes over the leading role. Knowledge from all over the world flows into the US, but not out of the US. Instead, completed products, machines, goods and services, which are necessary for the solving of the problems, flow out of the US. 3. Every participating knowledge carrier assigns its provided knowledge as a freely accessible property to the US government. This happens to avoid long and enduring legal fights, which would foreclose the urgently necessary problem-solving strategy. The US government will utilize this provided knowledge for the advantage and in the responsibility of the whole world. Four. In return, the US government will grant a benefit from the profits that is earned when the product, machines, goods and services which were produced in the USA out of the provided knowledge to every participating knowledge carrier. These benefits are predefined and dependent on the results, so they are personalized to the achievements of every participant. 5. The project participant and later the realization partner organize and refinance themselves but the US government provides appropriate possibilities of refinancing in the contents of the adaptive capital economy. 6. The project participants and later the realization partners organize the management, which is necessary for the different levels of the projects themselves. This management surveys and obligates itself to keep certain courses, as well as special criteria on quality and safety. Seven. The US government provides appropriate instruments for the internet-supported exchange and use of knowledge and surveys, the obedience of the predefined rules for participating, realization and the following profit distribution. 8. The US government respects and backs up the principles of self-organization, of self-control, of technical relevance selection, as well as the principle of fairness and equal chances. The same counts for security and availability. Nine. The US government appoints distribution companies out of the free economy, which will worldwide retail the products, machines, goods and services, which result from the announcement of the problem cases and the solving of these problems. These distribution companies oblige themselves under a commercial control through the US government. 10. The profits from the selling of the product, machines, goods and services, 
that evolve from the announcement problems are always transferred to a custodial account institution named Transition Account Institution, TAI, which is controlled by the US government. This is necessary so that the US government can grant the result-oriented rewarding to the participation carriers of knowledge. 11. The US government can deprive all privileges from the partners, single persons as well as companies which are acting under 9 and 10 whenever verifiable offenses against the rules of correct accounting as well as disloyalty or other criminal delicts are detected. The US government has the right to give the privilege to another person or company. 12. The US government uses public and non-public instances to fulfill its duties according to own discretion. We have adapted the following problem and its solution because it can exemplarily demonstrate a possible function of GOCPC. The litigation. In the north of California, there is an electricity producer, Pacific Corp, owned by Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, the local farmer, and the there living Native Americans. Karuk, Europe, Klamath, Hoover tribes involved in an adamant lawsuit. The farmers fight for their right to take enough water from the river which flows through Oregon and Northern California to water their fields, as well as their right to dung their fields to gain rich harvest. The Native Americans fight for their right to take salmons out of the Klamath River and to live in a healthy environment. The electricity producer fights for his right to produce electricity out of the water power through the choking of the river. This lawsuit is taking place in the front of the court for many years with changing success for the so-called parties and without finding a solution that satisfies the interest of all parties. Up to the state of affairs, on 17th of January 2008, the abridgement of the four water restraining structures, four dams, GC Ball, Copco 1, Copco 2 and Iron Gate, 
isn't unlikely anymore, as it seems to be cheaper with costs of 110 million dollar than rebuilding it at a cost of approximately 300 million dollar. The local situation. Since the water of the river has been piled up, fishes, especially salmon, die. But fishing is livelihood and part of the culture of the resident Native Americans. The reason for the fish dying is the algum plume in the storage lake, which intoxicates the water. Via the crown, the water, and via feeder animals, these toxins finally also reach the human food chain and cause deadly intoxications or subtle diseases, especially of the liver. As the maximum allowable limit for these toxins are already exceeded thousandfold in the water, the Native Americans sue for the abridgment of the water, restraining structures, and the rebuilding of the original river landscape. The electricity producers defend themselves against this and describe the water power to be a non polluting and carbon dioxide neutral alternative of producing electricity. But the originator of the algal bloom is to be found somewhere else. The algal bloom is boosted by the farmers who cause the eutrophication of the water by using fertilizers and through the cattle slurry. The mentioned algae is a gram-negative cyanobacteria, formerly known as blue-green algae, which bustles oxygen photosynthesis and which stress the water with the excretion of toxic metabolites whenever they appear in great amounts. Further. The heating up of the water during the warm season enhances the growth of the algal bloom, but the crossing of the limits for water quality has fatal consequences for the ecosystem of the river and the health of the residents. A solution based on science and technology, which respects the interests of all involved parties, hasn't been elaborated until now to our state of knowledge. The method. Here we draft a solution for this problem as a model case for the possible future functioning of the GOCPC, which we want to provide as an effective instrument for the formulation of appropriate solution strategies during our presentation. In this case, it is only a thought case study. Now then, GOCPC has obtained a knowledge about the problem case. After hearing the involved parties, viewing the data material and provided expertises, as well as after the checking of the circumstances, the GOCPC interviews the parties for their proposal for a solution. Parties in this case include American Rivers and eight other conservative, conservative organizations. Four tribes, Karuk, Yurok, Klamath and Hooper, Klamath County, Oregon, Siskiyou and Humboldt Counties, California, the Klamath Water Users Association, Farmers Outside of the Federal Irrigation Project, the Pacific Coast Federation of Fishermen's Associations, the States of Oregon and California, the Department of the Interior and the Dep Department of Commerce. Usually all proposals for solution will be discussed, even if they do not satisfy the interests of all parties are quite often completely disagree with the interests of the different parties. After a approval through the fighting parties and the recording offices, the GOCPC now turns to the community of experts via the internet and asks them to provide possible solution strategies. Through this approach, there won't emerge any costs for the US government. Now, the GOCPC collects and proves these provided solution strategies after a short time, the GOCPC has elaborated an appropriate solution on the basis of all incoming proposals. This is connected to the aim to satisfy the interests of all of the involved parties so that an amicable consensus can be found. The concept of technical realization, including the calculation of costs and draft contracts, will be elaborated and adjusted together with the fighting parties. After a straightforward period of time, the contracts can be signed. The implementation of the solution strategy can now start. The result. Within two to five years, the ecological balance of the river can be re-established. 
The electricity producer is satisfied because the solution strategy provided by GeoCPC doesn't need an expensive, big dams in a river anymore to generate energy through water power. Due to new technical solutions, which aren't widely spread in the USA yet, water power can be used for electricity generation without dams in the same amount as with dams. Moreover, this new way of using water power without dams is about 50 to 80% cheaper as generating electricity with dams. In Europe, there have technologies of generating ecological power been applied for years in order to save sensitive stream courses. So the electricity producers are satisfied because in the future they can gain electricity from water power by much lower costs than before. Due to the new method of providing engineering and job performance through the institution GOCPC as presented in the solution proposals and with a new concept of mobilizing the society's power, the so-called iPhone wiki principle, also the cost for the abridgement of the existing dams are much lower than expected. Further, the electricity producer uses the solution in whose development he was involved as a part of his marketing strategy for the ecological production of electricity through new water power technologies. But if the electricity producer thinks about retiring completely from the electricity generation at Clamath, so you have to think about a public adjustment and accordingly about the opening of a new source of income, for example a streaming plant at the near Pacific coast. Anyway, the modern streaming plants in the sea gain higher earnings than the conventional ones in the rivers. The Native Americans are satisfied because there are more salmons in the rivers than ever before. From the overage of salmons, they can develop an additional selling business and so they generate additional earnings. The farmers are satisfied because they now have a high quality natural fertilizer which doesn't cost more than before and which unburdens the waters. Additionally, they get a high quality forage for their cattle. Moreover, the availability of water in the dry seasons is not a problem any longer, because also for this a solution will be provided. Especially, no liquid manner will intoxicate the water of the river any longer, in the case if the slurry doesn't make an equitable contribution to the eutroph eutrophication of the river anymore. The local officers are satisfied, because the previous costs of welfare and nutrition programs are shrinking. Moreover, there are additional tax incomes from new branches for the state. The initial financing is provided by the parties or by the government. Here the principle of help for help for self-help involving the performance of all participating parties counts. GOCPC provides and uses new ways of planning projects, transferring knowledge and making technologies available. Scientific Technical Solution GLCPC always proposes different solution strategies which always try to provide a convergent broad solution of the existing problems. This is necessary if there should remain some decision range for the parties. For the now described solution strategy we assume that the abridgement of the dams is already decided. If this assumption is not applied, the strategy of solving problems of course changes. The first step of solving is that the Native Americans fish up the remaining pub salmons from the intoxicated water and store them in fresh water pools to avoid the further shrinking of the salmon population. The fresh water pools are pre-financed by the electricity producer or by the state if the necessary financial funds can't be rendered anyhow else. The same is valid for the technical equipment as well as for the preparation of energy which is necessary for the fresh water treatment for the upbringing of the fishes. The pre-financiation is later with an additional earning paid back to the electricity producer, the state or to the private investor. The Native Americans are coached by experts as far as the knowledge of upbringing salmons with freshwater pools isn't available on site. As soon as the salmons are big and strong enough, they will be set back into the river. They will swim into the Pacific and finally return after years. 
Until the salmons return, the river has been made passable for the salmons again, so far that they can reach their natural spawning ground. But also then, the pup salmons are fished and cockered up, because the more salmons survive, the more salmons come back later. In this way, the population of wild salmons is regenerated systematic and fast. The later ex existing overage of salmons can still be fished up without endangering the population of salmons. A healthy possible river is also enhancing tourism. The salmon fishing season is an attraction for tourists and, beside the selling of ovary salmon delicacies, it brings additional profits for the Native Americans. In the second step of solving the problem, which happens independent but at the same time as the first step, it has to be estimated precisely how much water from the local river the farmers need to water their fields every year. On the basis of this calculation, an artificial lake of sufficient size, which doesn't bother the Solomon's Trail, is separated from the rest of the valley around Clamart. The separation of such an open artificial water laking can possibly take place in the valley beside Clamart by using conventional dam techniques. Later, we explain how, this, how it is prevented that a growing algal bloom again eutrophizes the river. Firstly, the solution concept for the storing water is explained. Due to a lack of data material, we cannot yet prove if a subsurface construction of tanks is necessary if there is too much evaporation from the artificial lake during the hot seasons. We want to explain those tanks shortly. It is a matter of huge subsurface water reservoirs directly under the farmer's fields or nearby. These reservoirs are huge, coated and ventilated concrete shelters or tanks, which were made out of the material of CRI, as far as the site of geology doesn't provide another, more useful possibility to situate their huge subsurface water reservoir over a large area layer to avoid evaporation or expiration of the water. Besides, it has to be mentioned that those huge shelter tanks, made out of the recycling products of the CRI, as soon as the branch can provide the material and made for storing water, could become the bestseller of America bu American business enterprise for dry or forest fire endangered locations. Huge desert areas, which are not used for the installation of solar power plants, could be vegetated by using the subsurface shelter tanks for storing water. If these areas are going to be vegetated through the subsurface tanks that are made out of the recycling product of the CRI, they could be planted edible plants or plant for producing green fuel. Also in this branch, the American nation can take over the leadership, motivated and moderated by the GOCPC. As there is a lack of other possibilities, there will be a subsurface tanks installed for watering the fields. The necessary techniques, of course, will also be installed immediately. The artificial lake on the surface, as well as the subsurface tanks, will be fed during the seasons when the river has a high water level. During the dry summer months, when the river has a low water level, the farmers firstly take water from the artificial lake to water the fields. If the water from the artificial lake is exhausted, the water from the subsurface tanks is used because there is no evaporation from these water shelters. So, the river is unburdened whenever it has a low level of water. The ecological system of the river stays as far as possible untouched in its natural dynamic. The costs for the construction of the shelter tanks are acceptable because the job can be done by FAT workers and armored concrete and is a usual construction material. Here, the principle of help for self-help will also be applied. Efforts which are adduced by the parties for each other can be reciprocally built in a forward defined manner. A local office service, the abundance of the efforts and the contractual obligation of the involved parties. Now we go on to the third step the inevitable coming up of an algal plume in the artificial lake. With a capable dimension machine, a machine for suction cleaning with a downstream algal separator, which is working autonomously and able to swim, the algal plume will be suctioned cleaned out of the reservoir lake. 
The aspirated alga, only if there is a sufficient big amount, will be via a conveyor thrown on a truck. The truck transports the alga to a convenient fall or land. There the alga are spaced on the ground for drying. Hereby the strong isolation dissolves the toxin of the alga while these are drying. At a later time an automa automation can be installed if the overproduction and the profit from selling alga products allow this. The dry alga will be brought to a mill to be crumbled to high quality fertilizer there. This alga fertilizer will be enriched with nitrogen binding microbes and a few other addi additives to improve the quality of the farm ground. So the fertilization with the artificial fertilizer can be reduced without reducing crop yield. To our estimate, the illusion of non-metabolized fertilizer and its intrusion into the water and the main reasons for the alga plume. A solution for the fertilizer problem is necessary, because there is a danger of eutrophication also for the rebuilt natural river system. Therefore, an optimal fertilization of the fields shall be elaborated with experts' advices to prevent future eutrophication of the river. Alternatively, there could be made dietary supplement or feed additives for the farm animal husbandry from the aforementioned algae from the reservoir lake. The first does already happen today at Klamath Lake. The local enterprise will not lose its source of income, but only will take the alga out of the new artificial lake if it will be constructed, instead of taking the alga out of the Klamath Lake. This proposes ensure that neither the inevitable alga bloom in the artificial lake nor the fertilization of the fields will endanger the sensitive ecological system of the river in the future. It is a good possibility to bring employment to the local tribes which currently suffer from a high unemployment rate. They have the possibility to make the production of the alga fertilizer to their own autonomous job. Therefore, a competent and financial support has to be granted until the Native Americans are able to lead the enterprise on their own as far as they are interested in this approach. The now mentioned fourth step is only then necessary if the slurry of the cattle actually has a heavy input on the eutrophication of the water of Klamath Lake. The data material which we have at our disposal isn't sufficient for clear conclusions on this. In the case that it is proven and the eutrophication of Klamath Lake cannot be controlled with the above mentioned methods, following solutions for the slurry problem of the cattle is provided. The cattle gets an automatic slurry diapas. This is a diaper which is made out of breathable, watertight, synthetic material and which has a gathering cone and a drain tube. The excrements of the cattle will be gathered in a box or will be aspirated. Every cattle draws this gathering box on a small, light trolley while it is walking grazing over the white meadows. The diaper won't disturb the cattle also when it, when it is lying. Every gathering box on the trolley has an electronic alarm system which sends a radio signal whenever the box has to be emptied or there is an annoyance. The gathering cart comes and aspirates the slurry or repairs the annoyance. In further times also this work can be done by a fully autonomous robot cart. The slurry itself now changes from a polluting vestige to a useful raw material for the production of energy in bioplants. In combination with straw, husk and shavings, biofuel will be produced. The ashes are going to be another additive for the algae fertilizer. The peoples of Middle Asia used dried slurry as fuel for cooking or heating in the winter for thousands of years. In the endless veld there are no trees and so there is no fuel wood. The aspirated excrements will firstly be gathered in useful subsurface tanks. There, the slurry will be mixed up with straw, husks or shavings with the help of mixer and the draw work. Then the mixture is stored in open tanks which can differ in their size due to the later purpose. These open tanks will be set under insulation for drying the mixture. In this manner, biofuel, which will be used by private households or by cogeneration plants, can be produced easily. Alternatively, it is possible to cause a better metabolization of the slurry and to largely provide the illusion of harmful compounds 
due to biological immunization. This is also important in the case that the dams are not abridged. In this case, an ecological fertilization concept reduces the illusion of harmful phosphate and nitrogen compounds so that the lake cannot be eutrophicated any longer. So, the river will not be fluted by slurry or fertilizer. As a result, a healthy and natural balance appears. When the cattle is held only in separated areas, the slurry problem can be centrally solved because the slurry doesn't seep into the ground there. But this isn't possible with freewheeling cattle. Therefore, we mentioned this alternative solution strategy. Presently, we do not know if the slurry of the cattle has a significant impact on the algae bloom. On this point, we want to mention that the use of the sea current with open tube and plants, which are anchored on carriers on the seabed, would enhance a much more effective use of water power and energy production than it is possible in Klamath River. Klamath River opens out into the Pacific. Which sea current and tide conditions are existing there, this abdicates from our present state of knowledge. So we limit ourselves to the short mentioning of this possibility. The technological transformation towards the ecological electricity production is supported by non-public funds. It has to be proven how far the local electricity producer may receive subsidies from this program. Last but not least, because he is going to be burdened with the additional cost of the abridgement of the old dam and at the same time would lose his economic basis at Klamath River. It is important to mention that in this example case exactly those ecological technologies will be used, which will definitely have an announcement effect for similar problem cases. Here the US government can stumble across a model case whose solution concept is applicable for other problem cases in the USA and anywhere else in the world.